and he has to be going 100 and something across the desert. You like, see the Isle of Man? Like, across a real desert, no yeah. road up. He is fucking hauling ass, and you see him hit the sand, and his bike does this. Yeah. Boom! He's gone. Bike gone. He's off in the other direction. Fucking boom, 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 boom. You're talking about like the car rally? Yeah. Gets yeah. up, gets up, runs over, starts pushing his bike, boom, on it, and off again. I'm like, yeah. holy shit, I can't believe even the bike survived it. Because it's a serious, you know, it's a serious crack. Yeah. Guys die all the time, man. Getting yeah. off of that. Kind Check of out Isle of Man. They do that stuff on street bikes, running 200. They close down the whole fucking island. God. You crash you should, your, should, your shit. I mean, you over can fall off the side of the mountain. And I believe you have two weeks two weeks prior to qualify. Like, dudes go over, they don't even fucking race the race. They just go to ride it just to do the qualifier. It's fucking insane, dude. Crazy. They're coming in, they're on, you know, big ass leader bikes. Fucking, uh -huh. you know, 1,000 real deal. and better. And like, they come over the crest of these hills, the whole fucking bike is in the air when it lands. It just swaps out. Fish that, tail. dude, somebody dies every year. Just like, we'll look at it in a minute when we get it. It'd be cool just to go over there just to watch it. If you don't make a turn and you fall off, Fall off a cliff sometimes. Yeah, they, they, guys, guys die every every year. They close the island down. It's closed. Like, the whole thing that. is closed. No way. The car traffic, I believe. It is, it is fucking crazy the speeds these guys are moving. Fast. All that bike shit, I'm fucking, I'm over the bike shit. Like, we've crashed good in some razors. You've been in a helicopter for sure on the bike. Oh, bike. Oh, yeah. I'm still, still fun around bikes. on the bikes. Bike will kill you. But not at that kind of speed. I got a full race prep. Um, Baja 500, ran the 500, and I believe it ran on the 1000. I got both the inspection tags on the bike still. XR650R. XR XR you can't ride it here. Like, it, you can ride it down the highway. I've got some supermoto wheels for it and shit. It overheats. It overheats. Even oh. even with all the shit on it. Even with fluid on radiators it and the fucking. Boils the cool. Mini Cooper radiator fucking fan. All the shit. Fucking, you can't, it's too, it's too big. It's fucking everything about it. The 400, awesome. Terrible on the freeway. Yeah, I know because I'm powered. It's cool for he, fucking around on the He back gets halfway on the gas, shit. he's gone. I'm sitting here wide open, like, really? Really? That's the thing. Like, you gotta, you have to buy a bike appropriate to whatever your friends have. Because you cannot, you won't be able to keep up, or they won't be able to keep up with this. You have to, it's like you're having gonna have the same thing. If you have a four wheeler and you want to go ride with your friends that have razors, you're fucking miserable. Yeah. Constantly. Oh, I have them miserable. Once. So you gotta, you gotta have something equal. Equal. Yeah. They just brought, um, we just had some cages we just set up. We got some, we're gonna move these green trees into a little bigger tanks. We got these Exoterra tanks, which I like. Uh, what's the other brand? There's Exoterra, Exoterra. Yeah, it's Exoterra. And what's the other brand that's like these? Uh, it's one piece glass. I like having the two piece. I just like the way it looks better. It's um, easier. Huh? Is it chai or something? Nah, it's, no, it's a fish rep, fish. Rep, rep, uh, I don't. I don't know what it is. You're thinking the... Um, rep to something. Fluval cheese. Right. You're thinking fish tang shui stuff. Um, anyways, we're going to put these in here. And these guys, they've been here about 15 minutes. And we heard a crash upstairs, or we thought we did. Mm -hmm. So we figured one of them got bit or there was a snake out or something. So we come out and they're all putting on their ninja suits and gloving up and I their judo clothes and on. shit out in the garage. <laughs> to, uh, I said, are you scared of them? They go, fuck yeah, we're scared of them. I go, come here, I'll do it. So I've been we got bit Nick. by one of these before. The glove doesn't help. We had Nick grab the camera and uh, we're gonna transfer these in here. Are you gonna do the? Yeah, sure. You want me to do it or are you gonna do it? I'll do it. Ah, oh, that's fuck, that's cheating. Hey, yeah. no, I'm not Oh, you got water in here already. I just went to grab this. Okay, yeah. good thinking. Yeah, I'm not gonna open the cage once I put the snake in there. We didn't have enough humidity in the other setup and we're running heat over, we're running gas heat right now in the big snake room. So everything's pretty dry. So we're gonna throw these guys in here and um, use under under tank electric heat. And we've got a uh, a UV B bulb in here, which you don't need for these, but um, it really shows their color real well. And then we have a little heat lamp. So the uh, coconut on, uh, crushed coconut or shredded coconut shell on the bottom holds a lot of moisture, and we'll start spraying these guys down every day. They'll shed and. Uh, get all that peel that old skin off of them they're and they'll look good. awesome they look way cooler as babies um depending whether you get bx or some of the other um, types of green tree pythons they will look uh, purple with bright yellow spots or they'll look bright yellow with purple spots or you know um, yellow with green spots 
This one still has some of the different coloration in him because he's still young. He's got some yellow in him. As they age, they'll turn almost completely green. Um, they're similar to green tree boas, um, which have more banding in them, but these are actually green tree pythons. And you always hear how mean these are, and these two, when we got them, you could actually hold them. Um, if you mess with them constantly, um, you know, they'll tame down. But they do have very big rear-facing teeth. Uh, they are pythons. Yeah, it hurts. And uh, they're needle sharp. They're longer, you know, than normal snake They um, go right through the fangs, And they've got them all the way back. But uh, the snake could care less really what he's in. Most of the breeders carry, keep them in uh, Rubbermaid tubs with a PVC dowel, newspaper, or paper towels on the bottom, um, high, high humidity, and they just keep them in uh, shelf systems with heat tape on the back so they can kind of migrate back or forward on the poles. And uh, they breed and they do great. We just have them in these enclosures more for us than anything. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. They'll, they'll shit and it'll get in this and you gotta pull all this shit out and wash the plants. And like I was telling Jeff, I go, you know, it looks real nice right now the way it's set up, but after they shit on these um, silk plants a few times, we'll go, ah, oh, fuck it, and we'll quit washing them. We'll throw them away and the cage will become more sterile every few months. And uh, in here you'll look, there won't be anything in there, but right now they look nice, so. That's that, and uh, there's one of them, and we've got the other smaller one over here. Which we definitely need to shed. Just case coat. Just yeah, you're here. Yeah, you're here when Cody gets bit in the see. face. Not I've never been bit in the face, but I've been bit more times than I can actually count. Is that it? It's too short. We need an extension cords. Okay. But we need some some nice flat, appropriate length extension cords because I want them to. I want to run them straight down and hide them with something, and run them around the bases. Same with the aquariums. We need to get all those wires and cords integrated. I don't want to see any cording in here. So we'll, the the outlets are just not in the places we need them to be. This sort of gets interesting. So their tails are black, and. Uh, if you watch them once they once they're in here for a while, if you watch them, that you won't see it right now, but when they're, you know, adjusted and used to being in here, they will actually take that tail and wag it out in the air as a worm, like he's fishing. And that uh, they live in in tree limbs and uh, bananas and shit, and they eat uh, bats and birds and stuff that live up in the trees. So they will wag that out there to attract birds. And it's literally just like they're fishing. You'll see them do it. You're like, what in the fuck are they doing? And I didn't know it. We Googled it, and they actually do that. They'll wag, wag that little black tail, looks like a worm, and wait for something to come up. And we just feed them off of forceps. We got a bunch of rats that we breed, and we'll take some rat pups and just uh, put the forcep in there. But they're very, very food aggressive. When that cage opens, it's usually for food or water, so they're trying to bite you. And it's not that they're trying to be mean towards you or you know humans they're just looking for food they're going to have a very aggressive feeding response as most of our animals do because we don't you know keep them as pets and handle them enough to calm them down um, we have so many of them we are in there literally to food water and, and clean cages but usually they're expecting food to come in yeah you stick your hand in there she'll bite you without a doubt Oh, it'll be really good looking. Yeah, once, that, weeks. once all that dried skin comes off, once we start spraying them down on a regular basis, tang flip, the tongue flicker. Full fight demonstration. We have a video of we have a video of the um the retake biting, don't we? I'm sure you have a video of me getting bit somewhere. <laughs> I think I remember a video watching I think one time of somebody bit. getting bit. The retake, we have a platinum dwarf. So retake's the longest snake at, I guess they, they claim anywhere from 30, 32 feet. I haven't, I mean, they get big. I've seen 20 plus footers, but not a 30. Usually around 18. Huh? Usually around 18. So they, they bred um, dwarf, which comes in at like 12 fish, maybe a little bigger, I don't, I don't know. And then they've got super dwarf genes, which limit out at six feet, I think. I don't remember who did that Not first. the size of king snake. Brian from BHB or um, uh, Nerd. Cap is his name? No, Applegate's all clues. Um, Nerd. And he works with huge fucking cobras and, and pythons and stuff. And then there's a company called um, Vital Exotics. 
and they have some awesome stuff. I don't know where their stock originated from, but they've got a, a great face. If you guys are just into snakes, and it's all, most of their stuff is big. Uh, Salvador water monitors, which are a giant, as close as you're going to get to a Komodo dragon, like the next size down. It's like a dog. It, they are, and, they, and they're highly intelligent for a lizard. Yeah. They're, uh, they're like dealing with a dinosaur, um, but they're cool. And they deal in those and uh, real crazy high dollar reticulated pythons with dwarf and super dwarf genes and different color patterns. I love retics. But they've got some uh, pied, which is like, we, we have some pied ball pythons, mm -hmm. but they have pied retics, which are literally missing color pigment. So it'll look like a cow. You'll have all the color of a normal retic and then just a big white splotch. No coloring at all, just white scale. And, uh, but they do a lot of super dwarf stuff. So you can get a really cool high feeding response, you know, fast moving uh, python, and, uh, and there's them. a lot of money. The smaller the retics are, the more they cost. You're talking, you know, six to ten thousand dollar pythons. It's such a recessive gene. Whereas a normal it. retic, you know, you can get a normal reticulated baby for, you know, hundred bucks. But now with albinos and all the different shit in them, and the albinos, I'd say now, you know, I remember when the first albinos came in the country, I was probably 15 maybe. And there's, there's, you guys can look at all that, like, um, I think it was Kevin from Nerd that had the first albino burmesis, or one, one of the big guys, it might have been Brian from BHB, but um, the story he tells, you know, he had some money saved up for college, and he diverted that money to buy this pair of pythons, or the one, one of the pythons, which he had to breed full albino out of the wild to, or it was one of the first litters, had to breed his sole albino to a normal to produce a heterozygous, and then breed those back for a chance to get you know a couple out of the clutch, um, a couple of uh, full albinos. So now he's got a couple of full albinos he can put back together and start producing. And then you got to put other blood into that bloodline and bring in other new you know DNA to it. So it's crazy. several generations to get it, but you know off those het babies or possibility of het. You know he knew he had one full albino to a normal, so you have het and possibility of het, like it might not even carry that gene, but Science he made all his money back. He diverted, I think it was, I think he said it was nine grand. He had $9,000 to go to college, and he did not go to college with that money, and boy, I think mom was pissed about it. But, but the, uh, it's just cool hearing those guys' stories, because those were like the true pioneers of that industry. Like that shit did not exist. I remember when the first ones here and the first ones came in, and they come from, you know, farms in Africa and all over, you know, wherever they catch those animals from. But, uh, those guys, he took that risk and like he's in a big building. I don't know, his building literally looks like it used to be a hospital or a jail or something because he has different floors to his building. And when you come up, like he keeps all his venomous animals in these rooms. He, he has rooms with little like windows like you would have in a hospital or, you know, or a jail or something. And they're steel doors and shit. And you come in, there's a bunch of cages in that room. And there's cages in the next room. And he just keeps that shit like that. But it, it's cool to see somebody, you know, in the beginning of those industries where so much other shit that's happening, you know, this industries have been around hundreds of years. But, um, everybody just left, I think. I think so, yes. Well, yeah. we got five minutes. We had ice today. We had uh, four employees not show up. Everybody else showed up. Yeah. Um, things have just been slow today for some reason. And on, the, on the internet everywhere, it's been slow. So, we, um, you guys boxed up all of the mystery order threes. We're waiting on one item to put in, one. which we already have tracking on that will go in and those boxes ship. Yeah. So we'll probably pro start processing shipping on them tomorrow. Label the boxes up. Yeah, tomorrow or the next day. So yeah. hopefully yeah. hopefully yeah. Friday or Monday we start shipping those, yeah. depending if we get those. You'll start, you guys will start seeing shipping info on them. You'll start getting tracking, but we will not actually mail the boxes. We're holding on one item. Um, We've got the fourth mystery order already planned. We've got some really cool shit we've never done, um, plus some extra, you know, cool items going in there. Um, we've got a, a lot of new shirt designs. We've got a lot of new hat designs. We've got a lot of new artwork, a lot of new patches, a lot of new patches in motion already. We have a new shirt design in motion already. Um, what am I missing? Downstairs fucking with a new dog collar right now, 1.75. Yep. It's a Type 7R webbing wrapped in multicam black, so we'll be able to get the camo patterns on there if it works. I'm not sure it's going to work yet. We'll see. Um, That's it. Fucking, we got ice outside, so 
Look, we had ice this morning, everything is melted, so we haven't had the cars out. It'd just be, it'd be a fucking mess right now, and having to wash them off, we'd have everything frozen, so. That's about it, we're just. And we're supposed to get snow Friday. We're yeah. supposed to get snow on fr tomorrow. Friday's supposed to be big. Man, day, I keep so. thinking tomorrow's Friday. Shit, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll ship all that shit this week. Yeah, I I keep, so. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Why Thursday. am I thinking? I'm thinking Thursday. Today's tomorrow's Friday. Thursday. Today's tomorrow's Wednesday. Thursday. Yeah. I thought today was Tuesday. <laughs> so you guys probably won't have school tomorrow. Right. The roads are pretty clear, but the back roads are probably it's still going to be iced over. Yeah, it's supposed to sure. rain tonight a little bit. If it so rains tonight, you're, they're you're not going nowhere. Hey, that's good for me. There's no way a school, like there's a school bus by my house, there's no way that school bus can make it. Talk to them. I'm going to get a water bottle. Well, they canceled last night at what, 7? I hadn't even done anything. Yeah. yeah. We didn't call yet. Yeah. I got all the tires in my car and I drove in this morning. Right. Where's the um, pump up sprayer, the water sprayer? At the Probably other building? in her old office. Are we using no, it? Actually, no, it's, it's in the snake it's, trailer. It's I took it too. I've been watering them with that. We'll bring Are you using it for anything? No, we'll bring it over. We, I had it in the snake trailer just for them, but because we had those, that aspen bedding in there, it just wasn't working out. What other, what other real cool colorful animals can we bring over here? Upper geckos? Yeah, we've got a few really yeah. good looking geckos. All the best looking shit wants to hide them. Like we got all those mountain kings. We got a few dragons. And dragons. I don't want dragons in here. They're fucking they bugs stink. in here. No, not that they stink. They won't stink if you only have a few of them. I mean, but yes, then you're gonna have crickets all. I, I have no fucking bugs I had in three here. in Arizona. You don't want to always in. smell that crap. <clears throat> You should have stopped shitting in your room. <laughs> well, you know. I guess I like the Like the coolest shit that anybody would want to look at, it wants to hide. Like, right. And if you take its hiding away, it's going to stress out. And Let's get some scorpions. No, I hate bugs. It's like, it's like that one that today I had to dig around in the... Yeah, milk snakes. Milk snakes always hide. Beautiful snake. Mm -hmm. that'd be, oh, there's a gorgeous snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get an albino Nelson. Still wants to hide. Yeah, but they look like lifesaver rolls. Yeah. yeah. They literally the thing, look like a roll of candy. The thing with animals, like we have so many, it's the inputs. Like if you're breeding, breeding dragons, this, I'm gonna get bit talking to you doing this. Um, <laughs> you're breeding, say you're breeding bearded dragons. The money and time you put into breeding bearded dragons, if you're breeding $50 bearded dragons, you're producing $50 bearded dragons. If you're breeding $2,000 bearded dragons, you're producing $2,000 babies. It's the same maintenance. It's the same everything. time, so you might as well have better yeah, stock to start with. We got shit. We have shit that's just normal ass shit nowadays. It was cool then. Mm -hmm. And a lot, you know, a lot of it's beyond breeding anyway, so like, you just. Hand them over for pets. You know, they've got life left in them. They're still good animals. We're just time, 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 time. time. Mm -hmm. So empty that out. And when we put the new building in and move the animals, like the new building will be on a foundation with big ass huge drains and we'll be able to just hose everything out and partition it. So when we need to, um, you know, cool shit down to, to um, hibernate it, to pop it to produce, we'll just be able to partition the building, cool one side down, heat the other for the boas and stuff. And, be nice. Just thin out the you know normal shit. It's crazy to think about. You're talking about all the super high dollar snakes. That's all technically a genetic screw up. Well, it's genetic manipulation by man. Right, but in the wild, same strike. Yeah, that thing would die. Depends on what wild you put it in. Well, yeah. But It'll die here. It'll all die. Yeah. Yeah. Everything we have would die in the wild here. Mm -hmm. You put yeah. it out in Florida. <laughs> well, everybody's up in arms. Everybody's all up in arms in Florida. Everybody's up in arms in Florida over the pythons in the wild, and those weren't pet pythons. They weren't fucking. Somebody didn't release that. I mean, sure, it could have happened. A couple snakes got released, but they had all those fucking import centers and the venom centers and the zoos. When those hurricanes hit, that was all fucking, you're not talking some people let some pets go, you're talking thousands of animals washed out. Yeah. They're all up in arms over the fucking, the pet, you know, industry and single people 
that shit was, you know, Venom houses got fucking wiped out. Fucking zoos got wiped out. They're fucking worried about a damn, you know, Burmese python out there. And, and granted, yes, they will hunt and they will eat fucking things when they get bigger. But you got fucking king cobras running around that motherfucker. Documented. Right. Fucking, that wasn't some fucking pet somebody got careless with. Right. Fucking, they're worried about regulating the individual fucking person. They got, you know, that's not where that shit came from. I was wanting a cobra. And then they I had to, you know, they passed all the interstate commerce laws, so, like, you used to be able to just, which, which makes it harder, like, so you've got, you know, Burmese pythons, um, you've got, a, are boas, boas on? I think boas are on there. I think so. Boa constrictor constrictor, so all of your variations of. Yellow anaconda. But the dude that helped them write the legislature and brokered the deal, he was a reticulated python guy. So the longest python out of all of them, it doesn't go on that fucking list. <laughs> And uh, I believe the green anaconda is not on that list, but the yellow is. And the funny yeah, thing is, the, the, the green one is the bigger of the yeah, two. Yeah, the yellow one is on the list, I believe. And the yellow, the, uh, yeah, the yellow one only at six feet. The big fucking the green twenty-five ones? foot, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds. With an anaconda, that one's fucking wide anaconda. open for commerce. So it's an interstate commerce thing. If it's within your state, you can produce it and breed it, but you are limited as to how you can fucking move it. So if you're breeding $5,000 animals, it's nothing to spend $65 to ship one. And people don't know also, and I don't know if it's still this way, but moving animals, venomous or otherwise, you ship them FedEx. And you can ship them as an individual, but when you're moving numbers, you get a certification number. It's not hard to get. And they ship in these fucking cardboard boxes with styrofoam walls, and you have heat packs or cool packs, and they get there the next day by 10 a.m. When we buy animals, when I buy from one place, I usually, I was buying, you know, 15, 20 things that I wanted to save on the shipping. Because you're paying 65 to ship one, you're paying 65 to ship 12. Right. So we bought, you know, we buy stock that way um, from, you know, real high-end breeders that way. But uh, they fly those on um, Southwest, Southwest Airlines. <laughs> those are in the cargo, those yeah. are down in your fucking cargo hold. So all you motherfuckers that hate snakes, those fly on fucking passenger airlines. Snakes on a plane. The, uh, the venomous has a different, you know, there's a different procedure that goes yeah. with it and different permitting and stuff. But most animals like that, most reptiles, they can move anywhere, you know, within the United States or the world for that matter. Like, you can ship that stuff. A lot of the real, real high-end stuff, it goes to Dubai. Um, Germany yeah. is huge, too. For some reason, the Germans, a lot of money in Germany, a lot of reptile shit in Germany. But, uh... That's all I got. I'm sure these guys want to go home before it gets much colder and we'll uh, go ahead and turn that shit off.